To those of you seeking a career in trumpet playing, congratulations. Someday, all of this will be yours. The stage represents all the tools the field band trumpet section uses on a daily basis. The more experienced you become, the more equipment you'll find yourself using. What you're expected to own is determined by what kind of groups you play with. Orchestral players play a lot of C trumpet and may need a B flat, D E flat, or piccolo trumpet as well. Jazz, commercial, or big band players typically need a B flat trumpet, flugelhorn, and a few extra mutes. If you're into the music of Bach and Handel, you'll eventually want a piccolo trumpet and maybe even an authentic Baroque trumpet. Some classical players use many varieties of the same mute to give themselves more tone colors to choose from. The bottom line is, the more versatile you are, the more work you get, the more stuff you'll need. Don't worry, we're not telling you to buy a bunch of stuff right now. You should buy something only if you're going to need it. For example, if your band is playing a piece that calls for cup mute and you don't have one, you should pick one up. If you're a high school senior who plans on playing in university jazz ensembles, you'll want a Harmon mute and maybe a flugelhorn. A college freshman looking for a career in an orchestra will need a C trumpet soon. But there's no reason for a high school freshman to have all that stuff. Pick up your equipment as you go. First, let's talk about instruments and mouthpieces. Choosing an instrument or mouthpiece is like picking at shoes, clothes, or a new car. It's all about personal preference. Everything out there works for somebody, and nothing works for everybody. As your playing matures, you'll figure out what works for you and develop your own preferences. Although it's important to have role models, never choose your equipment because someone else plays on it. Try not to be that guy who asks Mater Ferguson what size mouthpiece he plays on. It would be like asking an NBA star for his shoe size. For students who are in their first few years of playing, here's a little mouthpiece advice. Don't go too shallow too soon. Many jazz and commercial lead players use shallow mouthpieces to brighten their sound and strengthen their upper register, but those mouthpieces should not be relied upon as a crutch for range. Those same lead players will tell you that breathing is everything, and when used by young players, shallow mouthpieces can discourage airflow. Learn to breathe first. A box 7C equivalent is a good size for most beginners. You might go to a 5C after two or three years, and maybe a 3C by junior or senior year. After that, go your own way. For trumpets, I only recommend you play the instrument before buying it. If you can't see it, hold it, and play it for yourself, you can't know whether you'll like it. If you're in a store with several different trumpets, try them all. Narrow down what you like, starting with brand name, then model, and finally, individual instruments. No two instruments are exactly alike. Even if you already know you want a box Stradivarius, you might as well try all the strads in the store. You'll probably like one more than the others. In fact, bring a friend along to listen. A second opinion is always good to have. If you're buying a horn you can't try first, over the internet for example, buy it only if you have the option of returning it. You don't want to drop $1,000 and get stuck with a horn you don't like. Believe me, you wouldn't be the first. So you go to a trumpet conference, you're looking through the exhibits, and there are trumpets everywhere. How do you tell the good ones from the bad? Watch now as we demonstrate what not to do. You'll see those players in the exhibit halls, but don't let it be you. First, look over the horn. No dents, the valves feel good, the mouthpiece fits snugly with no wobble, and when you play the horn, start with simple stuff like long tones. What's the sound of the instrument like? That's the most important thing. After an easy flow study or two, play some scales that take you into the upper and lower registers. See if the instrument sounds full throughout its whole range. Play some simple melodies in a couple of different keys and see which notes are out of tune. Play some fingering exercises to see how the valves work. Finally, try out a solo or etude you've been playing on your own instrument and see how the new instrument compares to yours. Watch now as he will demonstrate how to effectively get to know a trumpet.
As your trumpet playing progresses, you will naturally play more and more difficult music, which may require different kinds of mutes. The ones we'll go into here are the most common. Remember, buy them as needed. The first mute you're likely to use is the straight mute. Most straight mutes give the trumpet a more piercing, biting quality. They're most often used on articulated sections and don't usually carry lyrical melodies. Here's an example. The next most common mute is the cup mute. The cup mute softens the trumpet sound quite a bit both in tone color and volume. It's mostly used for soft, pretty melodies. Here's an example. Next in line is the Harmon mute. The Harmon is both the most expensive and the weirdest looking, with a hole in the end and a stem that comes out of it. It's usually played with the stem removed, but not always. Here it is with the stem. And here's the more classic Harmon sound without the stem. The last one I'll demonstrate is the plunger. This is exactly what it looks like, just a toilet plunger. Some of the stuff I've talked about today can be expensive, I know. But there's no excuse not to have one of these. Like the Harmon mute, it's used mostly in jazz or big band playing, and players have used it in fun and creative ways. With practice, you can make a lot of cool sounds with it. Here's an excerpt from a famous big band piece that calls for plunger. One important note about mutes. They change not only the tone, but also the pitch of the instrument. Some mutes will push the pitch a little sharp. Some will push it way, way sharp, while others will actually push it a little flat. There's no law that says which mutes do exactly what. It depends on the horn, the type of mute, the brand of mute, etc. Whichever mutes you own and use, practice with them and get to know their tendencies. There are other mutes you'll see from time to time, but those four are the most common. One last mute you might think about is a practice mute. They make mutes designed for silence, which can be extremely useful if you have a practice at night or if you live with unappreciative listeners. As a musician, professional or not, there's one last thing you'll be expected to have, and it's one of the most important, recordings. Through listening to great recordings and attending great concerts when possible, you'll develop your own concept of what you want to sound like. This is just as important as practicing. Incorporating the style of your favorite players into your own playing is an important step in a player's development. That about wraps it up for equipment. If you remember anything we've said, remember this. A musician's career is not a quest for the perfect equipment setup. Your time will be better spent practicing and listening to your role models.